Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Uh, welcome to this video. I'm Michael and this is what I've been reading. Today's video, Appleseed uh, by Matt Bell. Um, this is a fantastic novel uh, and I, I just finished reading it and wanted to share some thoughts and, uh, and a review of it. Um, I first heard this novel, it was published last year, uh, published in June of 2021. What, what year is it? I don't know. Um, and as, and when I read uh, just a little bit of early reviews of it, I, I knew that, you know, this would be something that I wanted to keep an eye out on. Um, and, and so, um, got a copy pretty soon after, I think maybe sometime in the fall. Um, so fairly soon after that, um, and at, when I was browsing the, the local bookshop, when it opened up again, uh, sort of post being, a, an online, uh, retailer only during, uh, sort of the first part of COVID. Um, anyway, so I bought it and then set out the TBR pile for a couple of months. And then I just read it, um, last week, uh, the first week of Jan uh, second week of January. Um, so anyway, I'm going to share some thoughts here, uh, about it. First off, what a beautiful cover. I mean, it's just like so rich and vibrant of a cover. Um, and really, um, it's like striking. Uh, it's just so beautiful. I really, really love it. Um, and it's, uh, second of all, what is this book? Um, and that's maybe a question that you could never answer really totally because it's so much of so many things. Um, but it's a novel, it's about 450 pages, which is right now kind of feeling like my perfect length of a novel. It's, um, you know, it's long enough that you can or big enough that you can really get invested in the world that the author um, has built and, and created. Um, but it's not so long that it feels like some sort of newsworthy, you know, event that you're starting it, you know. Um, but although I've been reading longer and longer novels, um, so maybe that ideal page count for me is inching up towards the like, you know, towards the 500 mark, which is longer than it used to be. Um, but anyhow, this is, so it's a, it's a good sized novel. It's a, it's a, it's a, it, there are three storylines in this novel, three distinct um, storylines. Uh, the first one takes place in uh, 1799 is when it starts in Ohio. Um, the second takes place in the near future, sometime in the later 21st century, I think. And then the third uh, storyline is set a thousand years into the future in a sort of post-apocalyptic uh, frozen wasteland. Uh, and so the novel is what um, a, a writer named Lincoln Michelle, I think is how you pronounce his last name, has recently termed the speculative epic, um, uh, kind of kind of giving a name to a few no or, or a, a pattern that he uh, has seen um, emerging in the last few years um, of, of novels that are ta trying to tackle really big issues like climate change. Um, is kind of the, the default, you know, like, like a clarify sort of thing. Um, um, but he, he defines it as a, a genre bending novel that ha that uses a wide aperture to tackle large issues like climate change while jumping between characters, timelines, and even narrative modes. So it's like kind of trying to tackle these big questions and it's, and it's really, um, you know, like, utilizing every sort of tool at its disposal to try to get a handle on some of these really big things. And, um, he mentions, um, Appleseed in, in that review or in that, uh, I think, uh, that edition, that issue of his, uh, newsletter called, what is it called? Countercraft or something like that. Yeah. Countercraft. Um, anyway, a, a couple of other novels that he mentions, uh, in that issue, I'm talking about these speculative epics. And I think that there was a shorter version of that in the New York Times, in a New York Times piece he did as well. Um, but a, a couple other novels you mentioned were uh, Namwale Serpil's um, The Old Drift and Richard Powers' The Overstory, both of which I also read and really loved back when they came out. And um, and I'm now realizing that a lot of the things I loved about them are some of the same things I really love about Matt Bell's Appleseed. So if you really like those novels, you'll probably like this um, as well. Um, so th like I said, there are three storylines. Uh, in the first storyline, uh, in 18th century and, and 19th century, early 19th century Ohio, there are two brothers. One is a fawn, uh, half sort of a half goat, half man, 
forest creature, you know, from um, classical mythology. And his brother or stepbrother, or sorry, half-brother, is uh, a man. And so they are traversing the wilds of the Ohio frontier, um, planting apple seeds, basically a kind of a Johnny Appleseed um, duo. And so that part of the novel is like, novel is like magical fabulism, maybe we'll call it. Um, it's, you know, fantasy mixed with like a very eco -con ecocentric um, uh, sort of, sort of uh, foreshadowing plotline. Um, really good, a really rich uh, and detailed world that Bill uh, creates in that section. Uh, there's this rich forest teeming with life everywhere. You know, just like some of the some of the passages um, are are so rich uh, in in descriptive um, detail as far as um, you know animals and plants and 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 what you know sort of the virgin forest. Uh, in the U.S. in the Ohio Valley would have been like, and, and I thought really well done. And it's just a kind of a, a, a really pleasurable read, especially at the beginning, uh, as far as if you like really rich nature focused writing. Um, the second storyline um, set in the near future is also f ends up being focused around Ohio, uh, but it's a sort of an eco-sabotage thriller-ish type genre where um, these kind of um, eco-saboteur freedom fighters um, take on an Amazon-like uh, corporate conglomerate that is uh, experimenting with bioengineering um, uh, and uh, genetic uh, cloning and things like that. And, and so it's kind of a, a thriller-ish tale uh, it, it, that, that uh, is interweaved with the first section and with the third section, they all, you know, you'll have a chapter of one, a chapter of the next, and then chapter of the third. Uh, the third section, like I said earlier, is set in a frozen wasteland, a thousand years into the future, post-apocalyptic, and the main character is a human-like creature who um, turns out is also sort of part goat, but for different reasons. And uh, he is, uh, this isn't really a spoiler, at the very beginning, he, he has to go down under the ice, under the glaciers, to try to find a biomass um, that he, uh, that it um, ha then takes back to this sort of recycling machine. Um, and so the, it recycles the biomass and then whenever he gets injured or sort of fatally, fatally hurt, um, he goes into the recycler himself and is turned into uh, biomass, um, you know, uh, sort of material and then is reprinted like a 3d printer and so he when you when you first meet him his name is c432 because he's the 432nd version of himself that has been printed uh and it's that story is about him kind of awakening having some sort of consciousness of of what he's doing and making a decision uh, to preserve different ways of preserving life in this post-apocalyptic uh, wasteland. And so th there, there's all these genres happening. It's, it's a big, you know, it spans a thousand years, um, different sorts of characters, but they're all controlled so well and, and woven together in a really, really um, fascinating way, um, especially how you sort of get, by the end of the novel, the, the thread that runs through each of the stories is really just really well done, and and it's the 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 end of the novel is well worth the payoff is well worth the 450 pages, which themselves are also fantastic. It's um it's a sort of a wild romp through genre, um in in the best sort of ways, um just like you know the 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 fawn in the first in the first of the sort of sections um loves to romp through the forest you know, just kind of wildly with abandon. And that's sort of what it feels like the author is doing through the, through the different uh, um, genres that are, that are in the novel. Um, really well done. I couldn't give it any higher praise um, than, than I am. I want to read just a little tiny, um, well, not tiny, but a little a small section at the end uh, to, to sort of wrap up 
um, this is towards the end of the novel, um, the, the author, the, um, the novels, the, the second story, John, the protagonist, one of the eco saboteurs, he's talking about, um, uh, he's sort of reflecting on the failures of, of that world. Um, and I, I think it speaks really well um, to, as a sort of hopeful plea for what can happen maybe in our world. We kept trying to fix the entire planet at once instead of tending to the many individual places where people might live well, where non-human life had once flourished. What we needed wasn't the flipping of one global switch, but instead a million small efforts emplaced in localities rooted in the specific land and water and air of the particular places where people lived. We could have taken down the fences, undone private property in favor of public ownership and shared commons, could have used the sovereignty Yuri had wrested from governments all over the globe to give, globe to give people the chance to discover new ways of dwelling instead of trying to preserve the one way of life almost everyone was by then living, a way that had already failed. Uh, and so it's also sort of um, like all of the best novels of ideas, and this is a novel of ideas uh, in, in part as well. Um, it's another genre. Um, like, the, like all of the best novels of ideas, it's urgent. Um, and, it, and it really means what it says. And there's a clear um, purpose for the, for the novel that, and a real love of wilderness and of wildness that um, sort of comes through all the way all the way through the novel um it's a it's a really wonderful novel and um i i would love to know if you've read it uh what you thought about it um or if you if you plan on reading it um what uh what your thoughts are when that happens um also i i've never read anything by matt bell but he has a couple of other novels and uh i think a couple of other short story collections and some nonfiction stuff. And he's coming out with a craft book, um, how to write a novel in three drafts, I think, uh, in March, which I'm really excited to, to read as well. I, I wanna dive into his back catalog. Um, he's a pretty young writer, uh, but uh, to dive into his, into his somewhat significant back catalog and, uh, and read his, his newest book on craft uh, as well. So if you've read other Matt, works by Matt Bill, uh, please let me know. Yeah, in the comments below too. I'd love to know what you what you think about them if you liked them or not. Anyway, uh, that's the video. Thanks for watching. Um, I will see you here again. I'm Michael. This is what I've been reading.